Welcome, Come Report Live. Lance, you are looking spiffy in that red vest. Holiday season here? It's uh, vest time, Bob. It's uh, Yesterday, it did not get above 33 degrees here, so I need a little extra warmth. I love it. I love it. Uh, Lance and I were talking before we went live, and, you know, Lance, you and I really love doing this. We love talking to the industry, and I appreciate your coming on and doing that. And the feedback we get is since we opened opened it up to the industry is has been very positive. So thank you for your support, and Lance, thank you for joining us. Well, Bob, I, what I love about it <clears throat> is we're able to take difficult SOP topics. We're able to take difficult SOP topics and and try to give you something that you can work with instead of saying, "Hey, I can't answer that," or "I don't know." And, you know, I don't think we're right 100% of the time, Bob, but we try to be right as often as possible. Please don't tell, say that with my... Well, Bob, you stumped, you stumped me on a poll question the other well, day. Well, I did. I, I just renewed my insurance. So, pretty, hey, um, by the way, you better enjoy this because we're not going to be on next week. Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, and I'm hoping everybody has a great Thanksgiving holiday, and I'm looking forward to it myself. All right, let's get, to, let's get to the polls. If they really wanted us to, Bob, we could probably swing one from the dinner table. Well, I'm, no, not me. I'm not going to. I got to deal with my family. All right. Uh, yesterday, Lance and I did a webinar on medical office professionals, and we asked this difficult poll question because we all want to know as lenders, what is the revenue stream? And I asked this question. And don't worry. There's no right answer. I just want to know what you think. So what do you think revenues will be for physicians, dentists, surgical, physical therapists? And Lance, what do you, uh, that's about what we had yesterday, right, Lance? Yeah, it's right in line. And we guys, you know, your great grantors and responses are great. We had a very seasoned group of SBA lenders on the webinar yesterday as evidenced uh, by some of the responses. Uh, medical practice revenue should grow steadily. Um, and there are a lot of factors that Bob and I talked about yesterday on the webinar. One of the factors is the American population is getting old. And uh, that's going to continue. Well, maybe to you up. and I are getting old. I don't know about it. <laughs> I need my, more grand, my granddaughters are my, my granddaughter she's going to be eight next month i haven't figured that out well, anyway well, Bob, just, just as an example i've had more medical tests this year than i have in the rest of my life combined i did a lot of research on this like there was a number that was sort of seven percent i didn't it could be there the reality is the takeaway from the webinar yesterday yesterday what you want yesterday is Revenues will increase. Lance and I purposely didn't get into a political discussion about how it's going to be paid for, but it will be paid for. And when you look at your any application in the industry, for example, are you concerned about a manufacturer and tariffs and these type of things? We all have to look at that, but I would not be overly concerned about the revenue stream for the medical industry. That was my takeaway, Lance. Yeah, I think I think the one one of the things we talked or you talked about, Bob, and I supported you talking about the status of rural hospitals. I mean, that's a very interesting factor in this. Uh, you know, you have to make sure you're aware of who your medical professional is, where they're practicing, where their affiliations are, and how that impacts the revenue stream. And thank you for bringing that up. The problem with rural hospitals, it is a crisis. I believe that I was, I've was i been at several USDA, BNI industry events, and they're talking about closing rural hospitals. And the problem is the rural hospital is the number one employer in that little community. And if that hospital closes, it's going to devastate the local Main Street. So the underwriting takeaway is take if you're if you're in lending in rural America, find out what the status is of that hospital, and that's I think that was an important takeaway from yesterday. That really is a crisis, and we put up some cute, uh, well, devastating. I shouldn't say cute, devastating charts. So make sure you understand the economics of that community. Um, number one employer in rural America. Uh, if you're a university town, you're golden. But if it's, if it's a hospital, make sure that hospital is healthy. 
they're closing every month, and that's a problem. Hey, let's go to the second poll question. An applicant with an outstanding medical student loan is eligible for SBA financing. It's a trick question, guys. Yeah, give give away the answer, Lance. Go ahead. I like to see them do well. Yeah, I know, I know. And the answer is very good. The answer is true, but Lance, when do they become ineligible at if they're delinquent? Well, student loans are a huge area of concern for SBA lenders because the default rate on student loans has been growing at a very rapid pace. If a applicant <clears throat> has defaulted on federal government debt, they are not eligible for an SBA loan. So it's really important early in the process when you get that personal financial statement, and run that credit report or LexisNexis, whatever report you run and you identify student debt to look closely at the payment history and, and to ask the question, you know, what condition are your student loans in? Are you current? Uh, because uh, again, it's not beyond a medical, you know, a medical graduate to potentially default on a student loan. So again, it's, it's an eligibility issue. And I'd like to tell you, Hey, it creates a repair, but if you make, uh, let's say you run a PLP loan to a medical professional who has a default on a student loan and it defaults, you've got an ineligible loan. Right. And make sure that that loan payment comes out of the global cash flow analysis. And this is becoming more and more of an issue, uh, especially when you're talking about startups uh, for physicians, dentists, optometrists. Uh, third poll question is, I can use the cost of obtaining the medical degree as part of the equity ejection in the SBA loop. Bob, I will not give the answer away this time. All right. And the answer is very good. Yeah, great job, guys. It, it's very clear in the SOP 5010-5J that the cost of education cannot be used as part of your equity injection. So yeah, it's not. And then for, for SBA lending, that's not a positive that we can give credit for. It's actually Lance and I put together this chart, bring it up, Joseph, and – these are the 10-year stats, and I'm a big stat guy. And this is why medical office professional lending is so attractive to you. And, and I and dentists, you know, one-tenth of one percent. Optometrists, less than one-tenth of one percent. And this is, this. I believe, riches and niches. And you can see these numbers also. If you look at the dentist, we love that average loan size. Um, so... The takeaway from the webinar yesterday was don't be afraid of all the white noise you hear about, about insurance, Obamacare. Uh, that is that we're all getting, some of us are getting older. There's going to be more of a demand, and these are very well-performing loans. Just make sure, as we said yesterday, make sure there's the appropriate equity injection. And the key takeaway, which Lance and I stressed, was even though it's not in the S&P, you got to get that key man life insurance. Well, and these statistics clearly point out, Bob, if you're looking for a vertical market for your SBA lending team, the medical professionals, I mean, these failure rates and charge-off rates, and the other thing, Bob, was talk, these charge-off and failure rates are outstanding. Uh, you know, go look at a restaurants, look at menu, look at various types of businesses. Most of them do not have these kinds of, of failure charge off rates. So these are pretty safe or safe, according to a 10 year SBA history. And the thing I like about this also, Bob, is it's a 10 year history. We can talk about the politics of the day. But when you're looking at a 10 year history, it's a pretty good reflection of the strength of the industry. And go to the next slide. This is just frivolous stuff, but I like frivolous stuff. Dentists say they have the best job in the U.S. Uh, the, the number two in the best jobs, number nine best paying median salary is 154000 And this is why, go to the next slide. This is why this industry is a nice industry to lend to, is you have an excellent secondary source of repayment. And I apologize for that slide. It's a little fuzzy 
But if you have someone who doesn't do well, say a psychiatrist, and they open up their practice and they don't do well and they make a loan, they can easily flip to get a job somewhere by a hospital, by the VA or whatever, and a very well-paying job, as opposed to that restaurateur who the restaurant fails, who's going to hire them. So that's yeah. – go ahead, Lance. I think this is a great statistic to look at, Bob, because most of your medical professionals, just like you said, uh, if for whatever reason their practice struggles, maybe gets in trouble, these guys can go to work for a hospital or a, a big medical organization, garner a large salary, and still can repay your loan. And just to keep you up on the trends, this is the new trend. Lance and I debated whether this was a threat I, I don't think it's a threat. Go to the next slide, Joseph. And the virtual reality practices are becoming more and more prevalent. What I love about this slide, this is a uh, MD Live. It's owned by 250 hospitals. Average re wait time is 11 minutes. They t you talk to a doctor over the, um, um, you know, on your computer, and they prescribe. And obviously, if there's an issue, they're going to send you to somewhere else. But this is a important factor on that. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a threat to your professional. I think it augments it. But Lance, you relayed a story about your personal experience. Yeah, it's you know the thing for me, Bob. Busy people, like all of us are, uh, don't have an hour to wait in the doctor's waiting room before we see one. Uh, these online virtual reality practices, uh, you know, I had a pretty tough cold. I go online, you know, tell them a couple of things. Next thing you know, I've got a prescription of Walgreens. Yeah, very good. Anyway, uh, so that was our recap. Um, we're, we're, we're Let's go to the next page. We also did something else, and it, take this and go ahead. We're going to give this out to you. We came up with a checklist of just for an addendum for the SBA loan. And these are all the items that we said you need to consider. You have your normal underwriting. This is not a complete underwriting list. But we wanted to highlight the items that you need for that. And I added, this was on mine, the SBA does not require key man life insurance. It does not require malpractice. But I'm saying if you're making a loan in this arena, you got to have it. Oh, absolutely, Bob, because the the practicing medical professional is the revenue stream. Yeah, and, and I told a, a, a friend of my, a friend of mine, I, in fact, I made him his first SBA loan to acquire his business 30 years ago, 56 years old, um, dropped dead of a heart attack. He's my friend. He's my dentist for the last 30 years, and, you know, unfortunately, facts of life impact those loan defaults and failure rates. Anyway, so we came up with that. In fact, Lance, you and I do a monthly underwriting webinar, and we will be doing this for every profession. I think we have child care coming up next. Um, and so we're going to come up with a checklist for that particular thing. Hey, uh, Kathy asked, I am having a difficult, difficult time getting numbers to line up in the change of ownership page in SBA1. And I get an error message. Lance, you're an SBA1 expert. What do you say? Well, SBA 1, the business acquisition loan or the change of ownership loan is probably uh, the, there's a single page that you have to complete in SBA 1 uh, to, to do a business acquisition loan. And, and it's a little odd, Bob, but if you look at my response, you've got to make sure that the total that's paid to the seller equals the sources of cap or the uses of capital plus equity. Uh, and it, it also has to line up with the assets being purchased. And frequently uh, lenders don't populate those assets being purchased in a way that equals the total amount paid uh, to the seller for the business. Uh, so again, you need to pay close attention and you need to make sure that the goodwill category is properly populated as well. Uh, but it's a balancing act, and again, you've got a purchase price, uh, you've got uses of funds plus equity, uh, and then you've got a listing of how the assets are going to be spent. Each of those categories have to equal one another. 
Uh, if anybody has a particular problem with that, you can print screen your, your page and send it to me and, and I can help you uh, navigate that. But it, but it is in SBA one, Bob underwriting is one of the most challenging uh, types of loans to get done and, and complete and be able to submit. Let's go to the news of the day. SBA just released this morning uh, an inspector, <laughs> inspector general uh, audit about their IT. I, this always comes up. I think the takeaway is IT is problematic, whether you're SBA, whether you're at your institution or personally. So we are just, the takeaway is let's just be careful with all that stuff that's coming through. Um, and this was an interesting report that the Fed says uh, we see weaker loan demand. I, Lance, I read in the Wall Street Journal yesterday that there may be a, a slowdown, global slowdown recovery. Remember, what Lance and I always talk about is there's peaks and valleys, and we've, we've been in a great performance of SBA lending, but there will be another downturn. We're not predicting when, so let's just be aware that the good times will not continue those performance rates that I showed you earlier on medical office professionals will not continue, and, and there, there will be hiccups in the future. Well, Bob, and, and I've said this a hundred times over the last few months, now is the time to hone in on your servicing and liquidation skills. Uh, I'm, I don't think the slowdown is going to be as dramatic as what we experienced in 2008. No, I, 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 I certainly hope not. But uh, I do think it's time to get ready because your borrowers are starting to feel a little more stress. You know, I had a call from a borrower the other day that was talking about, hey, my rate increased multiple times. What's going to happen to me? And as with all SBA loans are usually reamortized either on the note date or on an annual basis at the end of the year. So the borrowers don't feel that increased payment until it reamortizes. And uh, you know, you will probably at the beginning of the year see some borrowers just struggle a little more. So you need your servicing and liquidation skills on point. Yeah, and as interest rates rise, that's just a cost of doing business. And if you don't have the offsetting revenue to do that, you're going to have stress. So uh, we, I like to bring this up just to let you know um, that there's there may be clouds on the horizon and, and what we are in today. Uh, we're certainly not going to be <laughs> in the future, so let's let's be aware of that. Hey, Lance, I have a pretty cool gig. I get to talk to a lot of people, and one of the things we started doing last year is we started naming SB professionals um, lenders of the year. Pat McCrell, I know you worked for him. I he's spoken at our events. I'm very pleased to name him the Main Street Lender of the Year. Pat is an amazing gentleman, uh, a lawyer. He went into the Marine Corps, and he, he served, served as a, a lawyer, and then he got involved with New York Business Development Company. Very strong advocate for Mason. Very pleased to name him. Well, and Pat is an exceptional choice, Bob. We were talking about this before the Coleman report, and uh, Pat – does a great job of serving the country with some parts of his SBA lending. They're a great CDC. They have a lender service provider. They're involved in all aspects of SBA lending, servicing, and liquidation. And, and Pat's as strong an SBA guy as you'll find anywhere in the country. Yeah, Chairman and Adco, anyway, well-deserved. And we also announced yesterday our SBA 504 Lender of the Year. This was an interesting submission. This is the awards are geared for individuals, and they reached out and said, hey, we want to nominate our team. And after reading the submission, I said, absolutely. So this is a team from Los Angeles and uh, well-deserved for them. Um, anyway, we'll be rolling these out over the next couple of weeks. If you didn't nominate someone, please get in line for 2019. We'd love to have those. Um, Lance, what are you doing in Marina del Rey in February? Well, Bob, I'm going to be warm, much warmer than I am now, but we're doing a loan closer training certification update. Uh, it's going to be live and in person. It'll be an opportunity for those who have done the course before 
to come in and, and get their certification updated for 2019, Bob. It'll also be an opportunity for some for a loan closer who hadn't taken the course yet. If you want to come out and get certified, it's a great opportunity. Marina Del Rey, Bob, is one of my favorite places in the country, as you know. And uh, I just look forward to seeing the SBA loan closers. And Bob, you know how I feel. The key to getting paid on the SBA guarantee uh, depends, and one of the most important parts of that is a quality SBA loan close. So I love yep. SBA loan closers. My analogy of the process is the business development officer is the um, the uh, property, the developer, and then they bring it to the underwriter. The underwriter is the architect. And the closer is the one who does the block and tackle to build that asset. So this is so critical for the creating a valuable asset for your institution. Hey, one more pitch, and then we will close. Lance is doing a uh, webinar. Uh, first time we've done this, closing the franchise loan. We'll be talking about all aspects of franchise. And with that, we are out of here. Enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday, and we'll see you in two weeks. Happy Thanksgiving.